Thank you so much. It's so good to be here with you guys again. And um, I just want to honour your pastors. You guys have incredible pastors. They are amazing people who have the most incredible heart for you. And as we've journeyed and talking about church life and leading people and caring for people, these guys have a heart of gold. So I just want to encourage you guys to pray for your pastors because these guys are awesome people and you are so blessed to have them. Well, it's awesome to share in this metamorphosis series. I love that word metamorphosis. It means something's going to change, something's going to be transformed, and I'm really believing that for you in your life this morning as I share with you. And I really felt as I was praying to share my story with you, because it's when you hear someone else's story, you can identify with what they've gone through. It can be a testimony in your life, meaning that God can do that again. He can do that in your life. And so I really want to just pour myself out to you, be vulnerable, be real, and so you can hear my story, and maybe that can help you in your journey. And my heart is that, as Phil said, you know, that you would actually be awakened this morning. So I just declare in this room this morning a spirit of awakening and prayer over your lives, because I believe we're in a season now where God wants us to take us into a new place and I'm not just saying that for the sake of saying that, and prayer is a key, key part in that. So my testimony starts in a wilderness season. Who's ever had one of those? <laughs> one of those horrible seasons where you think, God, what are you doing? Do you love me? Do you care about me? Are you actually interested in me? But my season started like this. It was about 12 years ago. And my wilderness lasted for two years. And at the time, it was a really long time. It was really awful. God stripped everything away from my life. Our jobs, finances, the church we were in, our friends. And I would have to say I was bare. I didn't have anything. You know, everything that I thought I had, he took away. And it hurt. I felt angry. I felt angry with God. I would go into my ensuite and just scream, God, what are you doing? You know, I got to a really low point. But it was in this time that I discovered the true meaning of what a wilderness is. You know, we can have that thought of wilderness as this, oh, just this horrible place. It feels like a thicket with all these bushes around me. They're pricking into me and I just feel so horrible. I feel I have nothing. But when I discovered the definition of what a biblical wilderness is, it actually transformed how I journeyed through my wilderness. And so there's a scripture in Hosea 2 verse 14, and I lived out of this passage. God gave me this word because he wanted to speak to me, and it says this, Therefore, I'm now going to allure her. How beautiful. I'm going to allure her, I will lead her into the wilderness, and I will speak tenderly to her there. The wilderness is an invitation. It's an invitation, and the root word of wilderness means this, to speak, to converse. When God leads you into a place that seems like a wilderness, he actually wants to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to command things over your life. He wants to awaken the promises that he's given to you. He wants to warn you because he's a good God. He wants to answer you, the cries of what you're going through in your heart. He wants to appoint you to lead, and he wants to put you to flight. And that is what the biblical root word of wilderness is. Now, doesn't that... Flip it around and give it a total different meaning to what we may probably think it means. And so it was in this wilderness that I started to cry out to God. I started to cry out to him, and it was all the things of my heart. You know, when we're in that place of wilderness, it's all about the appetites of our heart. It's all about the secrets of our heart. It's all about the innermost being of our heart, and that is where God is doing a work. That is where he's working. And it might feel like it's horrible. 
but he's doing it because he wants to get your attention. He wants to speak to you because he loves you. And so it's here where my prayer journey really started for me. I've been a Christian since I was a little girl, gave my life to Jesus, was baptized at the age of 15, had a powerful encounter with God, but here I am as an adult, as a mum with three children in a place of a wilderness, broken, and it's here after all those years that I actually learned how to pray. And I was in pain, and so I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. I'd cry out to him. In Jeremiah 33, as Phil's just read to us this morning, call upon me. That means pray. Call upon me. Pray. And I will show you, and I will answer you, and I will reveal. Show means reveal. When we call out to God, he's going to reveal things to us. Great and mighty things that you do not know. So your prayer life is powerful. When you call out to the Lord, he's going to open things up. He's going to reveal great and mighty things to you. So that should be a big enough invitation to you this morning. Whatever stage in your prayer life you're at, he wants to show you great and mighty things. And it was here when I read that scripture and I started to, like, the word became alive to me. The, the words just jumped off the page. I started reading the word like I've never read it before. I'd read a sentence and I'd be so blown away by what the words meant. And I'd look at the root word meanings. Because when you do, it becomes alive. It's such a key for your life. Look at the root word meanings of scripture. It becomes alive. And I started to spend this time with Jesus, and he started to reveal to me great and mighty things of his kingdom that I did not even know. It was powerful. It came to this place where I was in this life flow of God, this river flowing from heaven above, and I was in his river of life. And so I would spend this two-year period in this wilderness Andrew would go off to work, I'd get the kids out to school in kindy, and I'd come home and I'd have books all over my dining room table, I'd have the worship music on, and I would read the word, I would be bawling my eyes out, I'd be crying out to God in my pain, in my wilderness. I was seeking his face because I just didn't know, know what to do. And it was here that I found him. Andrew would come home from work. I was still in my pajamas. There were dishes piled up on the sink. There was laundry everywhere. And he's like, what the heck have you been doing today? And I'm like, I've just been with Jesus. I've spent the whole day with Jesus. But this was two years. And it, seriously, it was a gift. It was a gift to my life. In Proverbs 25, 2, it says this. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of God of kings, sorry, to search things out. It's the glory of kings, of you and I, to search out the word of God so that he can reveal his secrets to us as friends. So I invite you into that journey this morning. I invite you into that this week. Just start to search things out because he has so much to show you. And it was in this place of searching things out that I studied the word of God and Jesus started to speak to me and I entered into this life of prayer. Now, prayer is just talking. It's just a conversation. It's a simple thing. You know, sometimes we think prayer, woo, but it's not like that. It's just the beauty of a simple conversation with Jesus, my friend. And he's your friend. And all he wants to do is to, to pull you away together with him so that you can talk to him, that you can have a conversation with your friend. And so I started to have a conversation with my friend Jesus. And I would tell him stuff that was annoying me. I'd be real. If it hurt, I'd tell him. If I was angry, I'd say, God, I'm really angry with you today. How could you do this to me? But like he knows it already, so better out than in, I say. So I would speak to him, 
But I would speak these things aloud, and I would speak his word aloud. I would take a sentence of the word, and I would speak it aloud, because when you speak his word, and it comes out of your mouth, it goes back in through your ears, and you hear it. You hear the word of God, and it comes right into your spirit, man, and it strengthens you on the inside. So if you are facing a trial, if you are facing something now, take the word of God. Speak it out. Let it come out. Let you hear it, and let it come back in through your ear gate, into your spirit, man, so that you're getting the truth inside of you. I started to become intentional. Are you intentional? Are you intentional with Jesus? I became intentional and I started to study the word of God. I got the knowledge of God, his ways. The word is full of his ways. And it led to a revelation of God that led me to an encounter with Father, with Son, and with Holy Spirit. And so when we position ourselves like seeking his word, talking to Jesus, when we position ourselves that way, it sets us up for an encounter. So are you positioning yourself that way with Father, with Jesus, with Holy Spirit, so that you can have a conversation with him and learn of his ways? Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. If you're hungry... You're going to be filled. So how's your hunger this morning? How hungry are you for Jesus to be filled with all that he has to reveal to you? In my prayer life, whatever stage I was at, I just chatted to my friend Jesus. And this intimacy of relationship just started to develop. Andrew would often say to me, oh, you're off with your other man. You're off with Jesus again. Can we have a bit of time together? I'm like, oh, I just want to be with Jesus. But, you know, when I started to search things out and I asked questions, you know, asking questions is a really good thing. And I had this conversation with God. And so whatever stage in your journey you are at in prayer, just take the simplicity of it. Take the simplicity of asking God questions, just chatting to him, and letting him reveal things to you. You know, in Matthew 6, it says, go into your room, shut the door, and go to the secret place. Highly recommend it. It is powerful. Romans 12, 2, it says, for us to be in constant prayer. And sometimes we might think, oh, that's really like full on. But throughout your day, you can be in constant prayer, just talking to your friend Jesus. If I'm stuck and I don't know what to do about something, I'm just like, Jesus, what should I do? What's your, what's your answer here? That's the constant prayer of daily life. Or Philippians 4, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplications and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We don't have to be anxious. Throughout your day, you can just ask him. Ask him. Let your request be known to him. And then he says, when you release that request to him, there's a peace that comes. Release it. Let the peace of God come and then take your hands off it. Don't go back to it again and start to worry and be anxious. I want you to know this morning that every part of you as a person is important to Jesus in prayer. He knows you, and every part of your life, he wants you to journey with him in prayer. So for me, with my children, when I have trials with them, and I'm worried about them, and they're 23, 20, and 17, even as they've grown up, a mother never stops being concerned for her children. I can bring those things to God, and God is so interested in everything about each of my children. In my marriage, God is so interested in every part of my marriage. <laughs> it is a prayer. You know, I can think of a time when I cried out to God for something in our marriage. And Holy Spirit came. And I just cried out to him and brought it to him in prayer. It was a simple thing. Man, it turned around. Andrew said to me, whoa, 
what's happened here? And I, oh, I'm, I prayed. I invited Holy Spirit in. <laughs> so see, he's interested in every part of your life, every conversation about every little thing in your workplace, in your job, whatever it is, in your struggle. He is there, and he's a conversation away. A key for you in developing your prayer life, as it was for me, was to know the ways of God, to know his ways. His word is full of his ways. And an example of this, it's taking a piece of scripture and knowing the ways of God. And so in James 1.5, it says this, if any lack wisdom, ask because he gives it to us. And so this is the ways of God. He says, hey, you're lacking wisdom here today. Well, just ask me, and I will give you the wisdom in this circumstance, in this trial. But believe in faith that you have received it, and it will be done. And so if you are needing wisdom in a situation, pray, ask for the wisdom, and believe it's done, and trust in him, and just wait for the answer. This is knowing the ways of God. He's the God of wisdom, and he wants to impart that wisdom to us because he's so good. In my journey, another thing in prayer that really was a huge focus for me as I started to know his ways and read his word, and I would pray his word. There's such power when we pray the word of God. I started to know my identity in Christ. Because I lined myself up with what the Word of God said about me. And, you know, we can feel insignificant or we can feel nervous or fearful or that we're not good enough. But those are lies. That's living out of an orphan spirit. And God wants us to live in the power of a son and of a daughter, of who he says that we are. So I came to know I am loved. Jesus loves me. He loves me. And I believed it with every part of my innermost being. I am chosen. I am the righteousness of Christ. I have authority in the name of Jesus. I am free. This is who I am in him. I reign in life because of Christ Jesus. I started to stand on the truth of God in my identity. I started to know his ways and take that and apply it to my life. And so when I would pray, I wouldn't pray from earth kind of pushing up these prayers to heaven, but I would stand in the authority of who God says that I was and I would pray from that place. Now, it didn't matter if I didn't feel it because I can't trust my feelings. Yes, God gave them to me, but I wanted to align myself with the truth, and I used this, and I was intentional about it in my prayer life, and I walked with Holy Spirit. You know, in this place for me of two years of wilderness, um, I was burnt out. Physically, I couldn't really manage some days the hour before me. Jesus was all that I had to hold on to. And so I want to encourage you to be intentional. Be intentional in your day. Hold on to Jesus. He's such a good friend. Another way in prayer that became something so incredible to me in these two years of wilderness was praise and worship. I'm a worshiper. I love to sing. I love praise and worship. But God taught me how to worship. He taught me how to sing Sing out the song of my heart. Sing out whatever I was journeying through. And it was in that place that I learned how to sing prophetically. He did a work in me. And, you know, praise and worship are high forms of prayer. They are high forms of prayer. So if you're not feeling good in your prayer life, I encourage you, put on your praise and worship. Let that praise come out of your mouth. Let it come out into the atmosphere. Enter into praise and thanksgiving because it leads away into the holy of holies where you can connect with God. So it's a choice. 
in your prayer life, choose to worship and magnify Jesus, and you will meet with him. Heaven comes down, and man, anything's possible. And prayer and worship, they just go together. In my life, I can't separate them. You know, you step into the praise and worship, and the next thing, it's like, Stuff's coming out of my mouth to praise my God, to, to pray and to seek his face as well. I worshipped, and in this place of worship, um, in my lounge room in the daytime, I started to pray, and I started to commune with God. I created like this, this well of communion. And so when you pray, when you set aside the time to pray, you will open up a well of communion. And it'll be a place that you will be like, oh, I just want to get home from work. I just want to go to my well of communion. I want to go hide myself in the room. I'm going to get up at 5.30. I want to be with God in this place of my well of communion. And he wants to commune with you. He wants to commune with you. And it's in that place where you'll become sensitive to God as he speaks to you. And as I said before, when we we proclaim the word of God, when we speak out truth, even in praise and worship, your spirit man on the inside of you starts to become stronger. You start to become strengthened. And when you then face trials and tribulations and you have worries, because you've built this well of communion with God in prayer and in his word and being with him, that becomes your first resort. You use that, that strength that you've built in the secret place, you use that, and you can use it as a weapon. And so when a trial comes, when a trouble comes upon you, you can tap into what you've already built in your secret time with the Lord in prayer. So no matter where you're at today, whatever the place of prayer you're at, whether you're just new to it, whether you're in the journey and you're discovering it, or you are just in this place of deep intercession, wherever you're at, there's always more. There's always more. There's always a well of communion that he wants to take you deeper and deeper into. And then for me, starting off on this journey way back there, it led to a place of intercession. Intercession. Now, sometimes we think, oh, that's just left for a few ladies in the church. But, you know, intercession, we're all called to intercede. We are all called to intercede. Intercession is standing in the gap on behalf of a person or a people group or a circumstance or a situation. So as a group of people here, say there's a a circumstance or a situation in your town, as a group of people, you can come together as one and you can stand in the gap and you can pray on behalf of your community, asking God, what's on your heart for this person, this circumstance, this situation, and asking him and praying what is on his heart, and he will show you. It's bringing things down from heaven, in a sense, and seeing them manifest on the earth. And I tell you, it is such an honor and a privilege as a friend of Jesus that we get to partner with him. And we get to bring heaven to earth and stand in the gap on behalf of another person. And if you haven't experienced that yet, I encourage you, keep going in your prayer journey. Keep pressing in. Because it is such a joy and an honor to be able to stand in the gap for another person and pray on their behalf. Each one of us is called to intercede, as I said. And this scripture in 1 Timothy 2, 1 says this. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all the people. We are called to pray. We are called to bring the supplication. We are called to intercede on behalf of all people. So how about this week? Try that out. Ask Jesus, who are you laying on my heart this week? Who is it that I can stand in the gap for and pray on behalf of to see a shift 
occur in their life and in their world. You know, in my prayer journey of digging into the Word of God and knowing His ways in regard to intercession, I discovered this beautiful verse in Job 36.32. And it's a picture of prayer proclaiming God's majesty. And this is what it says. He covers, this is God Almighty, He covers, He fills up, He clothes His hands with lightning, with illumination, with the light of heaven. Can you see that picture of God in the heavenly places, filling up His hands with the light of heaven? And He commands it, He appoints it, and He gives it orders to strike the mark. And that strike the mark there means intercession. It means to meet. It means to encounter. It means to fall upon. It means to reach and to touch. This is what intercession is. But do you see where it starts? In that heavenly realm with God our Father lifting that light of illumination into his hands. And so I see this as an invitation into the earthly realm from our Father God for a glory invasion of God from the heavenly realm to strike the mark on earth in intercession. And you and I are called to partner with him to see heaven come down. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is what intercession is, hitting the mark, striking the target with your prayers. So how is that going for you? How are your prayers going that hit the target, that strike the mark? You know, with intercession and prayer, we can shift things. I was just talking to a lovely lady before, and she was sharing me with me just a few moments ago how she'd prayed for her family in a situation, and the next day, everything shifted and changed. You've got amazing people here who know how to pray prayers like that, which is exciting. You know, your prayer can shift a circumstance. What seems impossible, you can do it. God has given you the authority to do it in his name. And we are called to pray and we are called to intercede. And so in my prayer journey, in my wilderness, he taught me how to do that. So I just want to finish this morning by giving you three areas in my prayer life where I hugely grew, and may this encourage you on your journey of what you can grow into as you establish your prayer life, as you start to build. Authority is a real key thing in prayer, and I must say that when I started off, I didn't really understand the authority that God had given to me and that I could use that with my prayers. And, you know, our authority can often be challenged. The enemy, he knows and he hates believers that are about God's business on assignment. And so as we pray, the enemy sees that we're on assignment. We're we're communing with God, and we're wanting to, to use prayer as a weapon and as a tool. And so the enemy sees that, and he doesn't like it. But, you know, God has given us authority He's given us authority. It's been appointed to us. It's been set up and established by God. And he has anointed and he's appointed you. And it cannot be denied. He said in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, that he has given us dominion over the earth realm. He said we are to rule and reign on this earth. So you and I have authority over over the earth realm. We have authority in our prayers to pray prayers and see things shift and to see things changed. He's appointed you to do this. And so in order to understand for me in my journey, the spirit realm, I had to understand my authority. Because when we don't know our authority in Jesus, and we don't know what he's he's said that we can do from his word, you know, we can then maybe step into things that are are not the right way to pray in the spirit realm, and we need to understand the spirit realm. But as you grow in your identity 
with Christ, as you grow in, in reading the word, as you start to know his ways, and you start to know who you are and the authority that he's given to you, and you start to read the word of God and understand the spiritual realm, you can step into a place of authority that God has given you, and you can shift things. You can deal with things. And you know, Jesus, he taught his disciples all about this, how to cast out demons and to set people free. He said in Luke 10, 19, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. That's the authority that you have. So I want to awaken that in you this morning. Do you know the authority in prayer that you have? As I started to, to grow in this authority, I started to get excited to intercede about things around me that I saw that were wrong, like something's happening. And I'm like, actually, that's not okay. So I'm going to stand in the authority that God has given to me, and I'm going to deal with that in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to see things shift. I think there's a saying that says the intercessor saw that there was a problem and so she decided that she would deal with it straight away. <laughs> and I love doing that. I get excited about that. But in my journey, in my time of wilderness, and as I grew in the Lord, you know, he, he came and he met me one night in my room. And I want to share this with you because there's mantles of prayer. There's the watchman anointing. There's the intercessors. We're all called to intercede, but there are some people that have that prophetic gifting and grace upon their life where they're called into that high level, in a sense, that mantle upon their lives to really pray and to stand in the gap. And I tell you what, if I could do that 24-7 and get paid for it, that would be so good. <laughs> but one night I was asleep in my room, and I was lying on my side, and I felt this presence of God come into my room. And I turned around, you know, in my sleep, my eyes were shut, but I turned around, and I saw this massive white horse, and Jesus was on the horse, and the horse just came and rested on my side, and it just started to breathe this breath upon me. It started to breathe upon me. And I didn't want to move because I knew that Jesus was there. He was coming to tell me something. And so I just lay there, and I lay there as this horse just breathed its breath upon me. And as I turned around and I saw Jesus, and I knew that this horse was this horse of war. It talks about it in the Scripture, this white horse of war. And Jesus breathed upon me, and I felt him just anoint me to pray and to intercede. And so this is what I'm talking about as a mantle of prayer. He came and he gave that to me, so I now know that I can stand in the authority with Jesus who has called me and appointed me. He's breathed his life into me, and he's called me, Rochelle, you are to be one who prays. You are to be one who wars on my behalf. And I tell you, it is such an honor. I just love it. It's such an honor to stand in the gap and to pray and to war on behalf of. So in your prayer journey, the reason why I share this with you is that there's more. There's more for you to encounter. There's more that God has for you. And you know, for me, I was just a little girl way back there with a dream in my heart who got things stripped bare from her life. But God met me in my pain, and he taught me. He was my friend, and he can do the same for you to teach you how to pray. Declarations. Declarations in your prayer life. Let me share this with you. Declarations are so powerful. Proverbs 18.21 says, Life and death are in the power of your tongue. Our words create worlds. They create atmospheres. So what is coming out of your mouth is really important. We can speak life over circumstances. We can speak death over circumstances. So let the words that come out of your mouth be words of life that create worlds. I encourage you to 
Use the word of God, his truth, and speak it aloud. You're struggling in your family or your workplace, and it looks hopeless. Take the word of God, his ways. Speak it over your circumstance, over the situation that you're facing. This is prayer, and let that declaration of truth bring life to your world, bring life to your circumstances. Declarations, they, they renew our mind because we're getting truth in us, not the lies. They direct the course of our life so that we step into a place of victorious living. You know, we've actually got a choice. We've got a choice of how we speak. Declarations in your life, they increase faith. You feel faith inside you start to rise up. You feel this propelling forward into standing on the truth. Jesus has won my victory, and that's where I'm praying and declaring from. And then faith comes because you hear the word of God. You hear the word of God. I found this quote a while ago, and at first I thought, gee, this is whack. (laughs) But when you read it, it's powerful. It says this, we won't have something just by saying something, but saying something is necessary to having something. Isn't that powerful? We have to speak. We have to say something to have something. This is the power of the declaration in your life. Ephesians six seventeen says this, Take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the word, the rhema word of God, And we are to use that like a sword. You can use that in your prayer life. Take the truth from Scripture and use it as a sword. Take the prophetic words over your life and pray them over yourself. Use those as words to fight with. The Scripture tells us to do that. Your prophecies are words of truth that Jesus has spoken over your life. Wage war with the words. Speak them out of your mouth and see God move. And the last thing that I stepped into as I journeyed in prayer that I want to share with you this morning is what it means to contend in prayer. Probably for three years in my life, this is outside of my wilderness period, I experienced something very difficult with one of my children. And I was in pain as a mum. You know, like seeing your kids go through stuff is the most horrendous thing. And God taught me how to contend in prayer for my son. And, you know, like, it hurts, eh, when you, something goes wrong with your kids. Oh, my gosh. But, you know, like, I would be, like, not sure about what to do or how to handle the situation. I tried everything in the natural that seemed possible, but I stood, I was determined for my son that this was not going to happen on my watch. Thank you very much. God had a different assignment and picture for him, and this was not part of it. So watch out. I got my prayer on. (laughs) I'd be like, huh. I stood in the gap for my son, and I prayed, and I contended in prayer, and the journey was like this. It wasn't like this. There were tears, there was pain, there was broken relationship, but I stood, and I contended in prayer for my son, and after three years of praying, my God answered my prayers, and he turned it around, and now I have my boy in the way that is better than I ever thought. And so with contending prayer, whatever you're contending for in your life, whether it's in your workplace or your family, or maybe it's in your health, maybe it's in your finances, and it seems like this is a really long journey. I want to tell you that contending in prayer is not about your relief. It wasn't about my relief as a mum for my son. It wasn't about the breakthrough that I really desperately wanted in my humanness. But contending prayer was about what God did in my heart. It's about what he did in my spirit 
It's about what he formed in me. My character. He took me to another level. It was about renewing my mind so I really did know the truth. It was about the enlargement inside of my spirit man so I really knew who I was in God. It was about my capacity. It was about me maturing as the daughter of the King of Heaven. And it was about my destiny. It was about the call of God on my life so that I could actually learn through this whole situation and circumstances so that I could actually step into a higher realm of spiritual authority where God has placed me to fulfill the destiny that he has on my life. It's an invitation. So look at contending prayer differently. It's not about your breakthrough. It's not about your relief. Although he does it, and it's way better than you ever expected he would do it in the first place. It's about what God wants to do in and through you and the journey of perseverance till Christ is formed in me. Jesus. Prayer is a gift. Prayer is a gift. Take this gift of conversation. Take this talking to Jesus. Take praying in the Spirit for other people, interceding. Take the gift of prayer and treasure it in your heart. It's built in you. It's formed in you. It comes out of you. And the 101 of it is relationship with Jesus. That's where it starts. That's where it begins. So I encourage you this morning, be intentional about your prayer life. And I pray that my story has helped maybe unlock some things for you in understanding many different ways that you can pray, many different things that God has for you personally because he loves you as a person. He knows you so intimately. As I was praying for you guys through the week, God gave me this scripture for you, and it's Revelation 3.22. And it says this, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And I really felt for you individually that God is, is stepping you into a place where he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. He's opening your ears this morning so that you can hear what his spirit is saying. He's inviting you into hearing more of him individually, but I also believe there's a corporate anointing for you as a church coming together as one, as a body in prayer, and hearing what the spirit is saying to your church, to your community. You can be a firepot of prayer. When you come as one and you hear what the Spirit is speaking and saying to you. So I just wanted to encourage you this morning with that scripture for you guys, personally but corporately as well. Revelation 3.22. So what I thought we'd do is we're going to have some fun. And I want to activate you this morning in some prayer. And how I'd love to do this is each and every one of us will have something on our heart that we're believing God for, that maybe we're contending in prayer for, a family member, a work situation, health, finances, whatever it is, you've got something that you've been crying out to God for. It's in your heart. And so I thought it would be great to buddy up with someone. Let's just go in pairs. Let's not do husbands and wives praying together. Let's mix it up a little bit. Find a buddy And I want you to share with them the thing that you are contending in prayer for right now with God about, or the thing that's on your heart. It might be just something that you're really worried and concerned about, and you haven't even started to pray yet, but it's there. And I want you to share that with your partner. And then I want you to pray for one another. I want you to take on the thing that they're contending for in prayer, and I want you to stand in the gap on their behalf. Speak some words of declaration out of the word of God over their circumstance. Speak some words of life over them. 
Speak some prayers that you know that have maybe worked for you in the past that you can encourage them in. And I just want you to take a turn, share on your heart, pray for one another, and let the other person minister to you this morning. So let's do that now, and then we'll come back and and close off the, the morning. But find a partner, share your prayer concern, what you're wanting God to break through for you, and let's pray for one another using maybe some of these tools that I've shared with you this morning. So bless you guys as you do that.